Hello, I'm journalist and comedian James Mullinger. Six years ago, I left London, England and moved to St. John, New Brunswick. Since then, my stand-up career has taken me to just about every town and city in Atlantic Canada, which, let's face it, has provided plenty of material. But I've also come to realize that this place is special and, crucially, underappreciated. So my wife Pam and I started a magazine, The Maritime Edit, to celebrate its natural beauty and the incredible spirit of the people here. But now, I'm embarking on a tour to meet some of Atlantic Canada's most interesting and dynamic people and chat with them about what drives and inspires them and hear what they love so much about this place that we're all so proud to call home. And I'm kicking things off right here at home with my friend, entrepreneur, Judith Mackin. Mackin is the very epitome of a chameleon. She's worked as a journalist, TV producer, social entrepreneur, and she's built a team at Tuck Interiors that have helped create hundreds of homes and commercial spaces across North America. I'm heading to the Kingston Peninsula, a beautiful oasis about 30 minutes from the uptown to meet Judith for coffee at her cottage. I'm James Mullinger, and this is Atlantic Edition. to St. John from London in 2014, it became apparent really quickly that almost everything that I loved about the city had been touched in some way by Judith. Really what I want to learn from her today is, is what makes her tick, what it's like being a kind of nationally recognized entrepreneur, but choosing to live in a smaller place, and really get to the core of, of what it is that makes her strive for excellence. So hopefully we're going to find that out today. The sign you're close to a cottage, dirt road. Uh, this is it. Oh wow, look at this. That is gorgeous. So James, this is the dining room. Particularly love this for a host of reasons, but mostly because the dining room table we brought from our house. This was the first piece of furniture Robert and I purchased together. Oh wow! Yeah, That's 14 about. years ago. Mixed in some modern chairs. We love the cardboard sofa from Japan, and like a nice mixture of all the things that we love: visual arts from New Brunswick artists, Robert's art, pottery, things of that nature. And it all just fits so cozy in this room. I love the kind of historical love element of this table. It's a love table. It is a love will. table. It is, right? Yeah, the people we love sit around this table, family, friends. We can't wait to get back to that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Oh, wow. This is a room for living in. <laughs> this is a living room. <laughs> yes, it's absolutely gorgeous. This is actually the room that I saw in a picture on Instagram nice. and knew I had to have this cottage. Wow. Special things I love about this room is the floorboards, for example. They're just glorious. They're original to 200 years ago. I love the fact that you know we're standing on something that's 200 years old, and but all of the art and everything in here feels both 
traditional but also super modern. Like, how yeah. do you kind of yeah. Yeah, so put that together? Everything that we have in here is original art. It's mostly New Brunswick artists. And we just want to surround ourselves with those sort of authentic things that are from our region. Yeah. So you literally practice what you preach? We do. Yeah. We do. And I like to preach a lot. You do preach. Yeah, it's good. Well, I'm looking forward to hearing more preaching. But it's nice to see the kind of visual embodiment of this. Yes. You don't see that in many vegan homes, it has to be said. Uh, <laughs> we're, we're bringing him back to his, where he needs where to he be. Where he needs to be. He, he, was, he was probably from the peninsula and it's good for him to be home. <laughs> he was from the peninsula, oh, yeah. I'm sure. So come on in, James. This is our kitchen. Love it. Yes. We spend a lot of time in here as well. The wood-burning fireplace, this is what heats a whole house in the winter because oh, it gets pretty yeah. chilly. And then we really like the idea of putting a sofa in this space because it's just so intimate and cozy. Everybody likes to hang out here, grandkids, family, friends. And then one sort of historic detail that we love is on the wall, the grandson inscribed his name, point 1853, and it's still there in wow. the wall. Yeah, so that's pretty cool. But it's nice because normally cozy doesn't mean Cool, and yet you've managed to bridge that gap between making it incredibly cozy but also huh. incredibly sophisticated at the same time. I love it. Thanks, James. Do you want to sit and have a coffee and we'll talk? I would love to. <laughs> Why not? I'm okay. glad you offered. This yes. is lovely. You're okay to put your coat there. Good. Oh, of course. Yes. Can this I pour you some coffee? I would love some coffee. Perfect. This yes. is this is heavenly. It's pretty casual, that's for sure. Yes, this is pretty much our mode all the time. Right. Well, <laughs> when of course, we're here. yeah, when you're here, because I mean, your your weeks are obviously kind of frenetically busy. Do you feel that when you walk in here, you just switch off? So it's a game changer. Mm. I can't really describe. We've been here one year to the month. Yeah, help yourself to some milk. It is the first time, I think, since I've been 14 years old that I've learned to relax. And it's, it happens the minute I hit the ferry. Yeah. Something just changes and switches and I get here and it's like a connection to nature. I'm more connected to Robert and it's just been a godsend. I would say that she's fearless. She's not afraid of failing, which allows her, I think, to be endlessly inventive. There are very few avenues that she's not willing to at least travel somewhat down. Yeah, she's very good at uh, taking up new adventures and challenges. Of course, it's very different to your to your uptown home, mm -hmm. you know, which is you know extremely modern, extremely beautiful, been been featured on on you know television shows internationally. What had happened with Robert and I is that we were always sort of getting these beautiful historical homes, and I kept trying to make them, you know, that that hybrid of modern. And so finally, we were just like, let's just build modern, right. <laughs> you know? And so with that, I learned an enormous amount about my own taste, my own style. What are your kind of favorite parts of the home? I think the amount of light and the views that we have over the city is definitely my favorite part. And the second part is the fact that we actually started Tuck in the basement of the house. And so initially it was just going to be a studio that my clients could come and we'd have like small furnishings and samples and things like that. But then Robert in his wisdom said, well, why aren't you just opening it up to everybody? And I was like, what a novel idea. I think for the most part, for the first year, a lot of people came to the store because they knew that we gave free tours. <laughs> yeah. you know? Can you tell me a bit about your upbringing and you know how that kind of uh, how that love and embracing of, of, of place has been kind of instilled sure. in you? So who I am now. It would surprise you where I came from. <laughs> I was adopted into a super loving family, but a very religious family and a very strict upbringing. But the one thing that the church teaches you is how to engage and, you know, how to really have a sense of yourself. The most important thing that my parents taught me was to genuinely love people. And then they also brought me up to believe that I could do anything that I set my mind to do. Did you ever feel any kind of uh, 
fear or insecurity about doing being the first to do a thing and you obviously surround yourself with the right people but there must have been people saying that's not possible you can't do that here when you first start out, everybody's quite happy of your success. Right. It's when you get bigger that people want to start smashing your success. <laughs> but you know, James, I, I pay very little attention to that because my happiness and the people that I work with, my clients, my team, my family, I'm only concerned with what they think. Right. I'm intensely grateful for all that we've accomplished, but I don't take myself that seriously either. If I lose it all during a pandemic or, you know, who knows what comes up in the future, you just start again, uh, you uh, know, because everything is fleeting in a way. Yeah. So, yeah. Would you consider yourself a rebel? Yes, 100%. <laughs> I'm always interested in, in approaching something outside of the system. I love that because, because it goes, you're going against, well, not that there's a grain to go against, but it's basically writing your own, you know, creating your own journey. And there's no, it's not a, it's not a path that's been walked before. I want to do a show and I want to call it Rage Against the Beige, <laughs> you know? <laughs> because that's, I guess that's the other side. Like, I just, I can't wait to get into people's spaces and just like change them, like revolutionize the way that they live or the way that a restaurant turns around when it's been, you know, when it's just been, you know, rebelled against. <laughs> well, it is. I mean, I think we know the name of your autobiography is going to be Rage Against the Bay. <laughs> yeah. um, but uh, but what, what mantra would you live by? Oh, um, just do the work. Just do the work. Uh, there's no magic in any of this. It's just you get up every single day, work your ass off, and strive for high goals. But really, it's all about just doing the work. Yeah. And really, the dream is waking up at four in the morning, looking forward to getting out of bed. Yes. Because that's when you know you're living a good life. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And for you and your team, Tuck, like, what is the perfect day? Like, but, but both mentally, personally, but, but in terms of the business, what's right. the perfect? Every single day, like I, this sounds crazy, but like I cannot wait to get up. Like I get up at, like I'll look at the clock and it's four o'clock and I'm like, oh, is it too early? No, because I just like, my brain is on fire. I can't wait to see what emails have come in. You know, I can't wait to see what's on the agenda for the day. And it's just like, I get it's like evangelical, right? Like we're talking about, I just can't wait to get out and win souls for decorating. We're just like helping people make good decisions to make their lives better. If you had to give people just one decorating tip to make their home better, mm -hmm. what would it be? Edit. Completely edit. People are encumbered by things that have been passed down to them, they don't really like, they don't want to get rid of, and people just end up with this massive amount of stuff that they don't love, they have no personal connection to, and it literally weighs them down. Just sometimes editing is, is like 50% of the job done. And then a clean slate, white, white paint, and then add a layer to it from that. That was two. No, that, but that counts as one. And I like it, so basically you remove the things you don't like, like children, <laughs> and then you paint it white. I like it, I, 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 I've got it. Remove, the, remove like the children from the home and then paint it white. Mm -hmm. We've talked a lot about the store and the uptown of St. John. Should we continue our conversation there? I can't wait. Let's do it. Happy days. Okay. Judith has been a fixture in St. John's uptown scene for decades. So it was only fitting to move our conversation into the heart of the city, starting with a tour of the epicenter of her creativity, the Tuck Interior Store. So this is it. This is it, James. We've seen where you relax, but this is your this is your professional home, if you yes. will. Yes, it is. This is where we hang out every day with big hearts. 
Amazing. How, how do you feel? I mean, it's clear how much love you have for your, for your team, for what you do, but how do you feel when you walk in here every day? Pretty much the way I feel right now. <laughs> like, it's a consistent feeling of awe. This building was built after the Great Fire in 1878. The architecture outside with the gargoyles, the expansive ceilings, it's just the, the feeling that you have when you're in this space. It's, it's like riddled with like history and then also the present and future. It just makes me happy. It makes our team happy and our clients. She cares about her community immensely and the people that she surrounds herself with. And she's always trying to be a better person. And I find that to be really inspiring. So what does community mean to you? Community is everything. Community is all the people that you surround yourself with that are like-minded and will ensure that the city moves forward. Right, and it's, it, it's, it's a wonderful thing. I can see how much you love this city and you've been such an integral part of this kind of uptown revival. What's it been like seeing it really come to life this past half decade? So I've been kicking around the city since 1985, <laughs> and it was like on fire. Right. It was a big time for the city at mm. that time. And then somewhere in the 90s, we just lost ourselves. We lost leadership. And then probably in the last seven to eight years, a revival has happened here. And I think a lot of small entrepreneurs, small business people, just basically said, you know what, we're not gonna wait for the next big project to save us. We're just gonna take matters into our own hands and we're going to give it our best shot. So everything that you're seeing around the city, all of our architecture, that used to somehow be an impediment is now being celebrated. Right. People are, entrepreneurs are moving into those spaces, cafes and retail spaces. And it really has been a revival for our city. As Mel Norton used to say, the Renaissance city. Yeah. And that's what's happened. Where would you, someone coming to St. John for the first time for a weekend, what would be the absolute must go to? Restaurants, bars, I know there's lots to choose from, but. Well, first of all, they have to come to talk yes. because we will share all the love for all of our neighbors and all of the great things to do uptown. Yeah. But actually my favorite project uh, that I always recommend people to go to is to Hopscotch. Right. Hopscotch is just this little tiny scotch bar. And even if you don't drink scotch, it was just really my favorite project to work on because the interiors are spectacular, the team that work there are great, and it's just a really special St. John moment. would you give to someone who was looking to do something unique in a place where people were saying you can't do that thing here or that doesn't exist here you know when you think back to when you were starting out what advice would you give to someone make sure that you really love what it is that you're going to be doing it doesn't mean that you have to do it forever but whatever it is you have to be passionate about it because there's the business that you're in and then there's the business of running the business so you're not doing seven hour days you're executing usually 14 to 15 hour days so you have to love everything and then I think the second thing I would say is to make sure that you remove your ego out of whatever it is that you're doing and basically put yourself in the mindset that you are in service to other people you're in service to your customer to your client to your co-workers and once you get past that hurdle of like, you know, you're there to serve other people, your business will flourish. Wow, thank you for an amazing day. Thank you, James. It's been fun. It's been Cheers. Beautiful. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers.